Hi, and welcome to the NFL Fan Forum. My name is Art, and this is my sidekick, John. What's up? Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to be talking about the AFC East. But first, our play of the day. Fifteen. Chubb. Chubb with running room. Chubb to the 40. On his way to the end zone. The AFC East has seen some major changes since the 2019 season ended. The Patriots won the division, but that was with quarterback Tom Brady at the helm. Now he's in Tampa Bay. Let's talk first about the Buffalo Bills. In the 90s, the Bills went to four straight Super Bowls, almost winning one of them. But Scott Norwood unfortunately missed his field goal against the New York Giants. The late Hall of Fame quarterback Jim Kelly was the leader of this team at that time. Do you think Josh Allen? has what it takes to be the next Jim Kelly? Well, personally, I don't know much about Josh Allen. <laughs> but here's the thing. Josh Allen isn't Jim Kelly. And Jim Kelly had a much different team than Josh Allen does. But Josh Allen, he has a, a speedster John Brown and other wide receiver Stefan Diggs, who came from the Minnesota Vikings. So he has great weapons. But he could struggle a bit because their offensive line is pretty decent. But you never know. He has potential. I have to agree with you. Being a young quarterback only in his third season really helps having a Stephon Diggs come to this team. Last year they were only 24th in the league, so they can only improve from that. In fact, he's been quoted as saying just recently, we need to score more points. And, of course, that's very important to be a successful team. Getting back to the acquisition of Stefan Diggs, do you think he's the piece that's needed to get this offense into the top level of the of, of the league? Well, here's the thing. When he was in Minnesota, he actually did very well. He pretty much caught almost every single ball that was thrown to him, even that one, the Minneapolis miracle against the Saints. But when he's in Buffalo, he's going to go through an entire new coaching change. So I don't know if he'll like the new coaches he's going to have to deal with, but if he does end up liking the coaches there, he's going to make a big difference for the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen will probably throw to him every single time. And you never know, Stephon Dix could end up being Josh Allen's new favorite receiver. To say the least, this does look like a top 10 tandem between John Brown and Stephon Diggs, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. As for the defensive side of the ball here, this team is really stacked and loaded. Uh, the defensive line is really, really good, and so is the secondary. Head coach John McDermott and defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier have built a top five defense here, I believe. The defensive line is led by defensive tackle Ed Oliver, along with defensive ends Mario Addison and Quentin Jefferson, who came over from the Seahawks. Not a bad team itself. What's your take on the defensive line? Do you think that they're going to be really strong this year? I think so. Like, they added a defensive tackle, H. Vanessa from Iowa, and he could be a real, real threat uh, for opposing teams. And I'm surprised he actually fell that far in the, in the draft. But I'm pretty sure he can learn a lot from the three players that you just talked about. He, he can learn a lot and possibly get better. And you never know, become a, a, a pro bowler within his rookie year. You never know. Mm -hmm. but their defensive line is stacked. I have to agree with that. These guys are going to stuff the run and get after opposing quarterbacks quite often. In the back end, we have the strength of the defense, led by Pro Bowl cornerback Tredavious White, and safeties Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. This secondary is a top three group in my opinion. Do you think these guys can take this team deep in the playoffs? I think so. Like, they were in the playoffs last year, and they... Uh did pretty well. They went into overtime against the Texans, but they almost won. It was just because of a field goal that they lost to. But if they can make it to the playoffs again, I think they'll go even farther, possibly to the AFC Championship, if not farther, to the Super Bowl. Like Tredavious White and Micah Hyde and Jordan Boyer are three really great players for the secondary. You never know. They can compete with the Chiefs. You're right. To beat the Chiefs, these guys are going to have to step up. 
So let's get into our predictions for this team. My prediction for this team this year is that they're going to go 11-5 and five and win the division and possibly even go deep into the playoffs. So what do you predict? I also believe that the, the Bills will go 11-5. and five. And I, I also think that they'll be the division winner. And they also could go deep into the playoffs. But you never know. There could be a, like Baltimore in the playoffs or the Chiefs to, to compete with them. I personally think that the Chiefs will be a, a hard game if they both make it to the playoffs. Well, that's our analysis of the Buffalo Bills. Let's go ahead and move on to the New England Patriots. Obviously, the top story for this team is Tom Brady moving on to Tampa Bay. Coach Bill Belichick has brought in Cam Newton from Carolina to compete with young Auburn quarterback Jarrett Stidham. Who do you think wins this battle? Well, I personally think Cam Newton will because he's a more experienced quarterback, in my opinion. And the funny thing is, they're both from Auburn, so they're familiar with each other, possibly. But... Cam Newton, he went to the Super Bowl. Jared Stidham, he's never been a starter before. And I really think that Cam Newton will get the starting job over Jared Stidham, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you're right. He does bring a lot of experience, but he's just got to stay healthy. Offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels, however, doesn't seem to be too concerned one way or the other. No matter which quarterback wins the battle... I have a feeling that running back Sonny Michelle is going to have a bigger role in this offense this year. What's your opinion? Well, I think so, but here's the thing. Cam Newton, he is an experienced quarterback, and I think Josh McDaniels likes that, and because he knows he can uh, run with the ball and throw the ball pretty deep. And the thing is, Cam Newton has to get used to his uh, new receivers like in Carolina he knew his receivers pretty well now he's going through a whole new uh, coaching change and he has to get to know his receivers pretty well this time if he can get to know his receivers very well and uh, bond with them I think uh, Josh McDaniels will take advantage of that but if he doesn't get along with them I think they're gonna have they're gonna be running the ball with Sonny Michelle more Wide receiver Julian Edelman should take care of that. Being an experienced veteran like he is, he should be able to make Cam comfortable and make things happen. I think I agree with that. The new COVID-19 opt-out plan has been utilized by the New England Patriots quite a bit. Have you noticed? I know I have. Guys like Dante Hightower and Patrick Chung, that defense is going to be a little less on veteran leadership. Do you think all those opt-outs are going to make a big difference to this team this year? I 100% think so because I'm not a Patriots fan by any means. And I do not know anybody uh, for backups on the Patriots side. And they're just going to have to use a lot of backups in the cornerback and possibly defensive end position and possibly linebacker because of so many opt-outs for the Patriots. Yeah, and we can't forget that defensive end Jamie Collins now went to Detroit to join, rejoin Matt Patricia and that team. On a positive note, one player that will be there is cornerback Stephon Gilmore, the number nine player in the top 100 list. His shutdown capabilities match with cornerback Devin McCourty should keep this secondary in the top five. Do you think with all these changes, do you think this is a still a top 10 defense? To be honest, I don't really know because uh, Patrick Chun opted out and Stefan Gilmore, he did decide not to opt out. But Bill Belichick, he's a defensive coach and the backups to Patrick Chun and whoever opted out are going to have to show up this year. If they don't show up, they're going to make Bill Belichick look bad. But if Bill Belichick can somehow make these uh, backups look great, Bill Belichick might shock some people. You never know. And on to special teams. We noticed that a big loss occurred for this special teams unit. Steven Goskowski had a left hip injury reported. He's going to be out the whole season. The Patriots drafted in the fifth round Marshall University kicker Justin Rohrwasser. Do you think he's going to be able to handle the kicking duties like Goskowski can? Here's the thing. He's not Steven Goskowski. And this is a rookie we're talking about. They just drafted him. And him to take over uh, kicking duties and him to be the starter, he 
he's going to have a lot of pressure on him to make field goals, so I'm not too sure. It's all about uh, coaching him to be a good kicker and him to make great field goals, so I don't know. I personally don't think he'll meet expectations, but you never know. He could prove me wrong. This is going to be very interesting. A rookie kicker and second-year punter in Jake Bailey. We'll see if they can produce results this year. Now let's move on to our predictions for this year. For me, I'm looking at their schedule, and I think they'll go 10-6 and six and snag a wild card spot. What do you think? For my prediction, I have them going at 9-7, and seven, and I have them missing the playoffs because there's so much potential now in the AFC. A lot of AFC teams have drafted very well this year, and they got a lot of great players in free agency. So I personally think that um, they're going to miss the playoffs with a 9-7 record. Well, that does it for our analysis of the New England Patriots. Let's move on to the Miami Dolphins. Former Patriots coach and second-year man Brian Flores seems to be bringing a really positive attitude this year. He really has this team motivated and could possibly make them into a playoff team this year. At quarterback, Miami drafted fifth overall pick Tua Tagovailoa and brought his Tua mania to Miami with him. Quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick will be the starter for now, but I wonder how long it'll take before Tua gets to start this year. So when do you think Dolphins fans will be able to see Tua on the field? Well, I think in the middle of the season personally because um, he had that hip injury in college. But other than that, he actually is a very intelligent quarterback. He has a very strong arm too. It's just that that hip injury, it could um, it could hurt him a bit. You never know. But for now, they're sticking with Ryan Fitzpatrick, which is, I think, the safer choice. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I think he's going to start later on in the season. They're not going to rush him in. Offensive coordinator Chan Gailey is very excited to get him into the game. The wide receiver group this year is led by wide receivers Alan Hearns and Devontae Parker. How do you feel about the wide receivers this year for the Dolphins? I mean, it's not that great. They do have veterans like Albert Wilson, Devontae Parker, and Alan Hearns, who came from the Jaguars. But those three, in my opinion, are the, their best wide receivers. And if one of them gets injured, we don't know any other wide receivers beyond those three. So if all three of them somehow get injured, the wide receiver depth is unknown to us. So it could be good, but that is if uh, all three of those wide receivers can stay healthy. One addition that should help the passing game is the addition of running back Matt Breda from 49ers. Him and Jordan Howard should be able to make that running back position pretty solid. As for the defense, let's take a look at how their secondary stacks up. One thing about the AFC East is it definitely has some really great cornerbacks. The Dolphins have a tandem that is top notch in cornerbacks Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. I also really like their first round pick in Noah Igbenogamy. I think this secondary has a potential to be a top 10 group. What do you think? In my opinion, I don't think so because there are some rookies and some veterans and we don't know much about any of them, if I'm being honest. So I don't think they're going to be on the top 10 list. In my opinion, their first round draft pick in Noah Igbenogany, he's okay. He's not the greatest. He's great at punt returner, but he's not the greatest corner. Again, it's all proof on the field if you can do the job. One key acquisition I noticed during the offseason was linebacker Kyle Van Noy from the Patriots. We know this is a still a rebuilding defense and a rebuilding team, but with Brian Flores joining together with Kyle Van Noy, I think they can actually bring some leadership to the young players and actually bring Patriots defense south. What's your impression of where this rebuild is going? So like I said, I don't know anybody on the Dolphins defense, but Kyle Van Noy, he's going to be helping that um, the linebackers uh, for the Dolphins a lot. So they could improve there. And their offense, they, I think they're going to do pretty well on offense. It's just that their wide receivers have got to stay healthy, even though there haven't been in, any injury concerns with them. I, they still have to stay healthy. I like their running back, Matt Breda, that they got from the 49ers. I personally like him, and they also have Tua Tungavailoa, who will be a backup for now, and they have uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, who 
should do pretty good for quite a bit. So uh, yeah, I think the Dolphins can be pretty good this season. And that leads us into our predictions for this team. Based on the talent of this team and a strong coaching staff, I think this team is going to go and improve a lot. And then they will be a playoff contender come next year. But this year I have them going 6-10 and 10 and probably a third place finish. What do you think? I have them going 5-11, and 11, and I don't know if I'm being too harsh on that, but that's what I believe. And I believe, I do believe that they will be a, a playoff contender next year. But they have a, um, a rookie quarterback that will probably need like a, at least like a year to like be a full starting quarterback. And I believe uh, they will go 5-11. and 11. And that's our predictions for the Miami Dolphins for this year. Let's turn to the New York Jets. First thing we're going to talk about with the Jets is the fact that probably the biggest offseason trade happened just before training camp when Jamal Adams was traded with a fourth round pick to the Seahawks and the Seahawks gave up two first round picks and a third round pick and safety Bradley McDougal back to the Jets. Jamal Adams' importance to this team cannot be understated. His Pro Bowl and his All-Pro selections prove that he's just a very great, talented player and he's so young, he's going to have a lot of more a lot more Pro Bowls added to the, to the list here very soon. I guess the biggest thing that he's, they're going to miss the most is he's got a lot of intelligence. He's able to read plays, he's able to diagnose plays at the line of scrimmage, he's able to bring out a lot in the other players around him, and he's got a really good attitude, um, very competitive attitude. This is going to be very important, and it's going to be sorely missed by this defense this year. How much do you think the Jet defense is going to miss him? Oh, I think a lot, because Jamal Adams, he was a huge part of that defense. He was he was actually mentioned as the best safety in the whole entire NFL. And I'm pretty sure losing him is going to leave a huge mark on the team. I totally agree with what you say there. General Manager Do Joe Douglas would have not done this trade if he didn't get those two first-round picks. And he can really build a lot with more, more first-round picks like that. I'm excited to see what he does. So let's talk about the team that they do have now. Coach Adam Gase, he's got his hands really full right now. And he's got his work cut out for him because... He's got a young quarterback, he's got a Le'Veon Bell that we don't know what he has in the tank because he seems to be injured a lot and I don't know what he's going to do to be able to bring out the best in this team. You've got to really do a lot of work to be able to bring out the competitive fire so you're going to have to do a lot of work to bring out the best in this team. Sam Darnold in year three is going to be expected to improve quite a bit. Now that he has a new receiver in Brashad Perryman from Tampa Bay, and also rookie receiver Denzel Mims. I'm really excited about him. To go along with Jameson Crowder, do you think Sam Darnold's the future of this team? I really think so. When I looked at his tape, he actually looks like a starting quarterback. He just needs to put it together in year three. And the thing is, they lost uh, wide receiver Robbie Anderson to free agency, and that was a huge loss. But now that they replace him with Denzel Mims, I think that they can take a step this year. Turning to the defensive side of the ball, defensive coordinator Greg Williams is going to have his hands full. I really don't think this defense is going to be very good this year now that there's no Jamal Adams. You've got some veteran leadership there, uh, like Steve McClendon and, and then new safety Bradley McDougal with some veteran leadership. But to be honest with you, this team on the defensive side looks like maybe the 25th to 30th ranked defense for this coming year. How do you see their defense turning out? You pretty much said everything that I wanted to say. Like they're going to be in like the bottom 25 for their defense. And they don't have Jamal Adams anymore, who I thought was a very great leader. But now he's not there anymore. So I really do think that they're going to go uh, bottom 25. So let's get into the predictions for this team. I think this team's going to stay competitive all year long. Uh, Grave Williams is going to have to be very aggressive on the defense to compensate for lack of talent. Um, Le'Veon Bell is going to have to stay healthy to help Sam Darnold in year three. Um, but my prediction for them this year is only 5-11, and 11, and I think they're going to be a last place team. What do you think? I have them going 3-13, and, and I might be a bit harsh on that too, 
But this is essentially a rebuilding year for them. So that's our final analysis of the AFC East this year. Looking to be Buffalo winning the division. And I really think New England has a chance to make the playoffs with Cam Newton and team. Uh, yeah, I think Miami and New York Jets, are they're a year or two away from getting anywhere in the playoffs. Tell us what you think in the comments section below. Be sure to destroy that like button and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell for future uploads. Thank you for tuning in today. We'll see you in our next video. This is Art and John signing off.